Hello, it's Healthy Tuesday on your view. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afwalabi Brand as always. I never do this alone. I have the ladies with me. Hello. Good morning. Hey. Topsy Tops, how are you? I'm fine. The hair. Mm, I, nice. I need to get on the show early, so I'm just doing my natural hair. It takes too much time, and then I'm coming in five minutes, to, ten minutes to eight time. So I'm doing this till the month end, okay. and then next month I'm braiding. Like I've already picked out the color, I'm going to be braiding. So I'm really excited oh about the different look. So Meanwhile. Lucky. Yesterday, my kids, when we picked them up from school, there were a lot of fallen trees, and they said, oh, mommy, is this a natural disaster? Mm. Our teacher said there are many natural disasters. I, mommy, I'm seeing the natural disaster for the first time. Huh. Amoji, why are you excited? <laughs> People are in crisis. People are crying. <laughs> you are excited that the tree fell down, but we must shout out to Last Park. They did a good job in moving the trees from the road, as in, I saw them moving from point to mm. point, trying mm. to pack mm. those trees off the road. It was really bad. Um, but you know the the paper is a very scary story of how we are expecting there's um, going to be tightening your seat belt the economy is going to go bad and i hear many people Moriah, forecasting doom and even people with beliefs you know christians muslims saying that ah nigeria there's no hope in this country there's no hope in this country i believe that what you say will come <coughs> to pass mm. people are still succeeding exceedingly mm. okay. in this country Jesus. so that, that expect great, great things for yourself instead of just saying nigeria has no future nigeria has no future you okay. that's what you will get all right no problem for ah. those of you that want to escape wednesday <laughs> tomorrow we're bringing in an immigration <laughs> uh, officer a lawyer. Gonna, lawyer actually <clears throat> He will better help. If you want to live, oh, I'll teach us how to live the proper way. So for those of you that want to stay, fantastic, stay. For those of you that plan to leave, an immigration lawyer will come tomorrow so you can leave the proper way. So you don't have a hassle and then leave the rest of us in, in, in problem here that we don't be able to travel. So let's move on to Mariam. Yeah. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, two things happened this morning. Uh, first of all, I was running late because of the traffic and mm. I had to walk and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Everyone asked me, what happened to you? Yeah, what's, what's happening to you? <laughs> and cat calls and things like that. I'm like, oh my God, you people don't know that I'm a mother of two. I can punish <laughs> you right now. I'm telling you. And it's like, why yeah. <laughs> then um, something I noticed as well, there's this tanker that obviously had an accident mm. or something, so there's fuel coming out. But mm. good thing is there's a fire truck just waiting beside what? it. Mm. There's last mile. You know, we always say we're reactionary. We're yeah. never proactive. So that is good. So it well done. You visited no. Lassema. That's Lassema. Yeah, and Lassema was there as well. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Leakage. So the thing is just mm. it, mm. in a bucket now. They can't stop it. The thing is just draining down mm. in a bucket. When I was coming, yeah. They had put in the the fire service was mm. doing a, putting this foamy mm. fluid okay. on, the, on the leakage oh, okay. right. all the way to that point. So I, you know, I, okay, I so told that this is mm. they, had, they were proactive. I was like, this is the same. This is the uh, Lagos fire service yeah. working. Good work. Good work. work. If yes. you work, we we'll praise you. Well yes. done. Yes. <laughs> or immediately proactively doing what they should. And nice. I didn't see traffic, so maybe traffic built in after I had left. Well done, Lagos. Really good. Last yeah. you know, good, good job. Service. The fire yes, service. They, yes, indeed, they tried Lagos. Mm. Ah, the Mother Nature tried us. Yeah, but I'm, I'm happy that the officials um, did their own we'll power. It's in the papers. We'll talk about mm -hmm. it. How mm -hmm. are you doing, Nima? Very well. So, follow up story from my Dare to Inspire third edition. Mm -hmm. There was a second segment I didn't get to talk about yesterday. The ladies from um, the pe people in IT. So, Sharif, uh, Sharifa Akinwomi was one of them. She is into, now into GSK, but she's in the IT business, tech, and all that. There's two see young ladies, space. very small young ladies, Amdala and uh, what's her name, Tawakat from Andela. So, and these young ladies, I was like, so just speaking, I was right. just they were speaking gibberish, gibberish to explaining you. Explaining what tech was, different angles. I thought tech, tech was one way. Mm. But okay. these ladies broke it down that there are different angles to make it in tech. And in, uh, this is one thing to get excited about these people. It's another thing to actually ensure that we harness these skills. Mm. Because this one's more than we travel out of the country and no, then we lose them. The, the, these ones are not planning Nigerian to travel trains, out. They are, they are, yeah. they are okay. Nigerian trained. They work with Andela here. Okay. And they are, they are they're looking to people. build more people. So this is why. All we need to do is get international partners to help develop these guys, get them the tools to work so they can actually create and innovate um, ideas for our own development. Because yeah. we don't see women, enough women in tech. Mm. Young women, mm -hmm. Muslimas. Mm. That's another thing. Because they mentioned that the opportunities in Andela, there are no discriminations. Everybody, right. just face your work and ensure that and you can grow. You can grow. We need them. We just don't want mm. them to just be okay. Well, me, I have to. I'm wearing my ring today. <laughs> <laughs> Please, give one, us the gist. One Yag Balagba saw me yesterday and goodness, she lectured me. Oh. Ah. Please, I want to hear. Yeah. It's a long lecture, and I'm not very good at it, but she just kept going on that. But what this was the one identity. thing she said that made you wear it? Today? She just told me, no, she said, I should promise her okay. that I'm going to wear it. Just wear it, promise me. Oh. I said, hey, mommy, I'll promise you. So I've said I'm going to put a little bag in my bag. 
I mean, I'm done. I'll put it in the bag. So when I'm coming on the show, I'll put it on. So, so you're you... not supposed to wait for the oh, show. Is it for the show you're wearing? You're supposed to wait for the show. You're supposed to wait. Please don't bust my bubble. <laughs> I'll wear it. I'll make sure I wear it every day. I mean, I promised her. Thank you, ma. And it's not, there's no reason why I don't wear it. I just, Thank you, ma. I just don't like wearing it. Thank rings. you, ma. I really don't like wearing it. Thank I'm you, just ma. Like you, ma. Thank you, ma. Thank God. I don't wear it. Yeah, I don't. And never take off me. Maya, don't let us catch you. Don't worry. I'll reserve it until the day where you arrange your hands with different things. I love rings when I wear them. Then when I don't want to wear them, I take everything off. Okay. I mean, I wear them when they match my outfit. I saw my house earrings, they're so beautiful. Ah, it's original. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on a break. This ring matter is it's a topic on its own. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll go through the front pages of the newspaper. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs> Let's start with the nation. <clears throat> Floods. Lagos urges calm as heavy rains pound city. Hmm. Insurance firms to recapitalize. Court remands musician Nara Mali as fraud trial begins. Mm -hmm. Senators elect split over Lawa and Goje Ndume. And June 12th day, Nigeria is safe, says Minister. Yeah. So let's should we start with Nara Mali. Okay. Ah. Since our class with the floods, since the oh, floods, yes. we started yes. talking about being the banter anyway. Okay, so the floods yesterday, everyone sort of had a story, had a story. to tell. Um, <coughs> roofs, trees, Ooh. electricity poles, telecommunication, uh, mass things were just falling off and falling. Uh, people have said it has to do with um, climate change, but there's no um, nothing oh, official no yet. <coughs> we don't know why, but mm. it just seemed unnatural. Yesterday, it first went dark. It was really That's dark, first, like it was evening before the rains. So, and you know, the thing is that we're not really ready for these kinds of natural disasters. We're really not ready. I, I, I just feel bad that, God forbid, anything happens. How Many do we cars care packed. For and then trees oh, fell on the cars. Ooh. Like that person is in, what would you do? You, most people don't do comprehensive insurance. Would the comprehensive insurance replace the cars for you? People's houses, the roofs went out. Their entire, everything they have in their house. Mm -hmm. so there are communities then that the entire road. And so every, they to can't mention there. So, you know, a lot of times we think, okay, it's in the ghetto areas or mm -hmm. it's every, was everywhere yesterday. Ikoi, VI, my Lekki, street. everywhere. Oh no, my, 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 my neighbor, a tree fell down and broke the entire fence. Like. Mm. to shreds. You can actually see inside that compound. Broke the fence. Oh, that's expensive. I was like, oh my goodness. This, you know me, we were in the studio. We didn't really know the I was scared that our yes. house was going to like, the, that the house was shaking. The house For was real? shaking. I was wondering, how, what's going on? Would this house, so will we survive in this house? Would this house crumble and all of that? But um, our hearts go out to everyone who's lost um, properties. Yeah. And I pray <clears throat> that God helps them recover because it's mm. really terrible. Um, Nair, the Nairamali story. Nairamali. Nima. <laughs> okay, yesterday okay. was there in... Are you putting he pleaded in not, like I don't understand. He pleaded not guilty Maybe. and the court uh, remand, uh, remanded him in custody for a later date hearing for, to hear his uh, well, bail application. His bail application, basically. There are 11 court, there are 11. the story. I must see Who is Naira Mali? Okay. okay. Please. Please. Because again. we don't hear. Naira Mali was onto this matter. He's a rap artist. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's, um, he's a hip hop artist. Mm -hmm. He's one of those that sing hit, hot, the hit songs. I don't know his song particularly, mm -hmm. but he's been trending. And one. so he, he made a statement that there are people that do Yahoo are human beings and they are working. <coughs> so that statement made people start investigating, ESC to investigate into him and they arrested him and they taken him to court that he found. Um, and 11 counts. He was found in possession of two counterfeit credit cards with names to other people. And yeah. that is why he's been... And arranged. also on this table, mm -hmm. we have asked EFCC that when people start blasting mm -hmm. their wealth on Instagram, please go and check them. So they've done that. Why are we yeah. not complaining? No, no, we're not complaining. We're, we're happy. happy that yeah. Yeah. Please mm -hmm. keep blasting your wealth no, on Instagram. No, and we can just remind EFCC to go and investigate if, and see where that money came from. on YouTube, catch yesterday's journalist hangouts mm. and, they and broke listen to my Oga breaking down mm. this issue. You. Moving on to the punch. <laughs> Doctors, nurses lament ah. poor pay, overwork in state hospitals. Gunmen kidnap twins, one other in Ikiti, and demand 22 million. 2019 polls, INEC withdraws and reissues 25 certificates of return. Tinubu meets Buhari, Buhari in Saudi Arabia and attacks PDP. National Assembly coverage, outrage greets satanic guidelines for journalist mm. accreditation. NNPC, 200, $223 million account, FG fails to pay whistleblower. And FG invites world leaders to maiden to June 12 democracy day. All right, lots of, lots, lots of lots of stories here. Which story? Let's start with the human interest story. Okay, so twins, um, their name Taiwo Kane, the Olowo Afara, right. on their way with um, are on their way on the Ekiti Road, Aramoko Afon Road, and there's also a Mr. 
Mr. Ayo Oladele also traveling that road. They were kidnapped and the kidnappers are asking for 6 million each for <coughs> twins and 10 million naira for Mr. Ayo. Mm. The families, you know, have reported this and we hope that they are found. But this place, this particular road has been known to the um, op um, right. police operatives as a den of mm. kidnappers and robbers. And they had actually sent police a long time before to just go comb through the, the forest, area. comb the area and make sure they don't have people like that. Right. But, I mean, it's crime. Let's man. talk about the major headline, about the doctors, nurses, lament poor power and overwork in state houses. So now, mm. Point started this yesterday. Mm -hmm. We saw the papers and the took us took pictures of hospitals, dilapidated hospitals. Mm -hmm. Now they went on to give us the conditions of doctors. And I'd just like to read out the bullet points that um, Punch addressed here. Doctors, nurses slumped and died because of overwork. Mm -hmm. of Some Cross River hospitals don't have a single doctor, says mm -hmm. the NME. That's we have fewer than 30 doctors in Cross River, says Pumsec. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Doctors were last recruited in 2013 for Oshun Hospital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have problems paying existing doctors, says Oshun also. Wow. Kwara nurses get 40,000 naira per month, says Ade Konye. Mm. Three Akwaibom nurses die every month due to stress, says NANM chair. Akwaibom hospitals have one neurosurgeon, one neurosurgeon, according to the NMA chair. Can you imagine? 109 doctors in Ekiti hospitals, 30% nurses left not replaced. Because the one and I left, yeah. and nurses mm -hmm. left, no, no, they're not replaced in Ikiti. Ogo employs 30 doctors to replace 100 that left, says NMA chair. We cannot have sufficient doctors, says Amosun's commissioner. Only 80 doctors in Edo. Hmm. That's your place now. Wait, is it the whole I mean, of Edo State? According the to this story. You have how many yeah. hospitals do they have? How many general hospitals, in fact? Yeah. And then the 379 doctors in Ondo, but some are already leaving. And Beno has 900 nurses and needs 2,000. So, so those are the bullet points. This that is amazing that Punch had to do this report, following our Minister for Labour saying we can go. Mm. The one that we have now, the facilities that we have at Dilapitating, that was the report from yesterday. Yeah. The workforce, the, the workers, um, um, what's it called? workers' welfare mm -hmm. is not properly taken care of, but the ones that are existing. And I'm sure tomorrow there will be another angle to this report. Mm. I hope that government is looking and listening and hearing everything that, that, that is coming out. NMA, thank you for opening up. Mm. I'm, I'm particularly disappointed for Oshu, Edo, and Akwaibom states because I know they have uh, <coughs> manpower. They also no, have apart from revenue. revenue, they even have res uh, human resource, people who can advise on this. They have the experts. Edo particularly, the first neurosurgeon in Nigeria was, uh, for, for a long time was Professor Danesi. That's my mother's uncle. We are from Edo. Those are people that you can consult on these issues, but no. And I know for Akwai Bomb as well. They, they, they will not consult the doctors and improve on, on the proper health care for people. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, the is the, is you have the priority, priority that you lack to put, so, to, put so, to address the, to address the, the, the EMEA, can't resources. The, the EMEA, resources, the EMEA Lamido Sanis, he mentioned that we are building a light rail in a community that doesn't have hospitals, doesn't have schools. Mm -hmm. Who are you building the light rail for? You are borrowing money from China, putting your state into debt to build the light show. Isn't that misplacement so of energy. priorities? When you can understand. build hospitals and build schools, mm. we should prioritize so what is important. So let's move on to Vanga, but we're happy that papers are taking this response. Vanga did one and last fantastic. time also. Fantastic. So we'll keep making more noise because mm -hmm. when your governor says he's going to for medical checkup, mm. these remind are the him. reasons, mm -hmm. remind him, why, why, they're, they're, why they're not investing or prioritizing mm -hmm. the development of our hospitals. Well, please, mean, before we go, state funds. Um, so uh, whistleblowing has been a major source of income for Nigeria right now. Mm -hmm. um, whistleblowing? Yes, whistleblowing. Nigerians. Yes, because a lot of funds that have been hidden, the, the minister mentioned how much money they got from whistleblowers. But they're owing. So they have not paid a whistleblower that blew the whistle mm -hmm. in June last year, and it's they've clear. recovered... 30, million, um, 30 billion. So these funds were in the Polaris Bank, and um, the, the, the man broke it down how NNPC has an account with Polaris Bank that hasn't been sent into the TSA account. Yes. And the man gave them the details, and they went to do their investigation, found out that the whistleblower blew a correct whistle, and he's supposed to get his money. He signed a contract <coughs> since June last year that once they get paid, he would get 2.5% of that money, and it hasn't been paid till now. Please so pay that him. He, He's supposed to be paid by the they government. Him. Yeah, so he has already pay. taken it to court that they should right. pay him. Yeah. And we can't, we can't be disappointed. Yeah. We, we know okay. we need guys to open up. Let's move on to Vanguard. Protect him yes. Yes. Protect him, yeah. Moving on to Vanguard very quickly. First quarter 2019, insecurity, election slow, economic growth to 2%. Mm -hmm. Let's speak a story that we haven't taken. Um, Amici can influence Igbo presidential future, but that was according to suspended Ohane's scribe. 
FG Rosa program for May 2019. We talked about that already. Mm. Outrage over National Assembly's new stringent conditions for journalist accreditation. I forgot to read that story. <laughs> Appointments, Buhari favored South more than North, according to records. And everybody's saying, uh-uh. Because I read, that, I, read that, I read that story, and I think what that story was just trying to say was that according to appointments, the South got about 52%, and the North got about 47%. But others are commenting that that 47% are the juicy ones. Mm -hmm. So even if it looks like the South got more appointments than that Buhari, they didn't get the relevant mm -hmm. um, uh, position. So I don't what know why that's... something relevant? Is it that you work hard at when you get there or that you expect to make money from that place? So make money it depends on your portfolio. Mm -hmm. So you might be so, controlling funds. Okay, so um, the, 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 na the National Assembly National has Assembly. released a new accreditation procedure for journalists and all the media houses that would have... Um, that would be able to have access to National Assembly in the Ninth Assembly, and um, there's been an outcry that this is stringent, Punch said it's satanic, everybody is coming against it because of the process. So now they're saying that you must accredit, you must show your, um, the basic one, you must show that you're, 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 you're a member of NUJ, mm -hmm. that's basic. However, they said you, any media house must show that they print 40,000 copies of their papers every day and it is circulated nationwide. <laughs> so now the, the media people are now speaking out saying that they are disappointed that the eight assembly benefited immensely from press coverage. Right. But because of the, <coughs> the because they knew that we had social media, the budget, this mm. um, yeah. premium times get access to their the breakdown of their mm. funds and exposing the things that they are spending money on. Mm -hmm. They are now clamping down on access of press to what is going on within the National Assembly. I think that this is beyond press. This is for every Nigerian to shout out concerning this because if it is passed to law it means nigerians will have less information on what is what going on there. there and the lawmaking chamber is very vital to protecting our rights mm. our so, democracy our democracy also this is, it's really sad, it's it's sad. It's, it's, they, they're just smuggling see the way they move laws and move motions that will favor so them they, very fast this is I bad understand. that's why we see and we keep saying it on this table the importance of who we take to the who we vote in mm -hmm. to legislate is so mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. We need men of high level of integrity, mm -hmm. who, who know that they can see money and say, you know what, I'm here for the people, not exactly. for my profit. Ah, Let's move on to Daily Sun. EFCC, we're probing Governor Okorocha. <laughs> Why now? Let's leave this man alone. <laughs> Protest rocks Lagos over state of Badagri Expressway. Yeah, mm. That's your area. <laughs> wow. Security really agencies that. dealing with threats to Buhari's government. My expectations from Buhari in 22nd term, says David West. Mm. And NUJ editors blow hot over National Assembly uh, attempt to gag press. Okay, let's talk about your so area. Yesterday, there was a protest on the Balagri Expressway led by the chairperson for uh, uh, Joe uh, Uke Udumaki mm -hmm. and her team. And they went on the road, starting from the roundabout in Badagri all the way to Matu, decrying the situation of the road. I keep talking about it, but I loved, I, I, I didn't like the fact that the pictures didn't show mm -hmm. the ones that they post, put online of the state of the road. I have pictures as well. Please help us out. I hope that Lagos State, uh, the new incoming governor, and they know that know that their first priority should be that road. Yeah, and because those that's women, the basis know, for which anybody would judge that whether they are. You yeah, know, I'm reading it. Those women responsive. are saying that that road has caused miscarriages, stillbirths. So, of facts. You know, this is a road that has become a, a road of pain and anguish. So it's not just about um, people moving not right now is costing lives and it, it should be a priority it should, for the next it should, administration. And it's costing business. We're losing businesses as well. I thank God. Just, uh, Joe said that the road is the gateway for, to the ECOWAS, to the yes, ECOWAS countries, how, into mm -hmm. this country by road. And government is abandoned. How can you abandon such a road? Yeah. In fact, the FG himself should not sleep <coughs> on that road. Okay. So, Okorocha is... I'm going to be um, probed, they said. This was during a meeting in the UK with some Nigerian media, and they asked him, and he says, well, not only the governor, they are going to be probing a lot of, of people. Mm -hmm. But um, there's a story, particularly, that the Paris Fund that was mm -hmm. sent to the state, um, uh, uh, over seven million was taken out billion. for uh, seven billion yeah. was taken out for other expenses other than what was meant for, which were salaries, mm -hmm. and they had to freeze those uh, um, that account. Mm -hmm. But eventually, they would take about two point five for salaries. But that the ways that that money that was taking out the seven billion was taking out was not palatable, and they have. We to mentioned it now. Yeah. This uh, because by the, the Paris refund that was that they're giving it to them Paris two weeks to. Refund. No, that was Paris this is the former one. So the new one. one. They were saying the new one. The they're they're not living in two weeks. They're not giving them. Are you no. sure they're not giving them? Well, they said they're, they're not giving them, and they're asking that they should not. It, it, it takes them, effect, so. I think, in June. Oh, yeah, I hope so. so. Gone because just be, it, it, it be a sent forth party. <laughs> <laughs> Fact. 
<laughs> we'll shut down the whole of Nigeria. <laughs> okay, let's go on a break. When we come back, it's Healthy Tuesday. We're supposed to be discussing depression, but unfortunately, our guest couldn't make it. So I think we'll focus more on the um, high hypertension. Okay. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. So yesterday's rain was, honestly, rain cats and dogs yesterday, and everybody has been talking and lamenting about their experience. We'd like to open the phone lines and let you share your own experience of what happened yesterday. Lots of people lost properties, mm. um, accidents happened, cars. Um, we talked about um, yeah. the car. It actually was in, um, was in um, was it Alfred Rowani Road. Yeah. It was the Camry. Yeah. They used that car. And that, was that, the, that was the internet. He broke the internet. He broke the internet yesterday. Mm. But um, as I said, we like our viewers to please call in hmm. to share their experiences of last night and how they're managing it and where, which areas you think we still need Lagos State government to help us to come and clear up because some, some, they might not be able to get everywhere. Not only Lagos, okay, in Ugo, also in Ugo State. Yeah. I heard it yeah. happened in Ugo State. So, um, but let me come to your own area. How was yeah. your own area? No, there was actually I didn't. There was it's no Larry. Yeah. Wow. I, well, my own area. I don't know inside inside to Larry right, what the right, story right. is, but right to my own area, and I got home. Every was everybody was safe and sound, mm. so nothing. And mm -hmm. previously, this early, um, late last year, we had cut down a couple of trees in my house that were not. So I was grateful for that because I'm sure it would have been one of the mm. um, trees that would have fallen on our roof. So we're fine. I took a drive yesterday, past Alausa. Lots and lots of trees. Almost all yes. the trees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Alausa, that, that there's this um, road by Seven Up, that road that mm -hmm. takes you to the governor's office mm -hmm. and along Alausa. The road is actually paved with trees, and which is healthy for us because I feel bad whenever we cut down those trees that we're losing oxygen. Um, oxygen. But those trees, most of them fell down. The trees cut, cut in the pole, um, the, the electric, electric cables, and also pulled some electric cables down. So most, a lot of people suffered power outage. We didn't have power yesterday from the rainfall yeah, till now too. because the, um, the um, power holding or the distribution, distributing network had to shut down most Even of the power. Square, I saw them, all their trucks were out yeah. there trying to fix these poles. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't have electricity either. Yes. So it's been nice to hear those views on what, what they what they're experiencing. But let me come to your own area. Our own is road. We, do, we had electricity. City, but <laughs> I had to go through seven up yesterday as well because the traffic all the way to Owuru was mad. Mm -hmm. I drove all the way to the um, exit at uh, Malausa and uh, that's a uh, Nurudin Kokpo Road, was that road, the exit. Mm -hmm. And the traffic was looking towards Bega was mad. So we, uh, we I turned in and there was a mast that had fallen at uh, Morego. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. a mast had fallen. And immediately they were responding. So yes, it, it, just a bit of traffic. I had to go through maybe to get to Ikeja. And that was how I had to bypass traffic. We'd like to hear from me. those living yeah. in Egbeda, Ajangbadi. Those Badi. areas. So in my area, getting to Festac, there was, yes, the floods had happened. Mm. And the roads were full to the brim. So I didn't even bother taking my car home. Because, you know, already we, we have potholes mm. and trenches and I think and, we have last time on the line. Maureen, are you there, sir? Uh, yes, I'm here. Good to have you, sir. Thank you very much. Eku <laughs> Thank right. you. So how has been your experience since yesterday? We know you've been working round the clock. Tell us a bit about what you've gone, gone through so far. So, well, thank you very much. I think it's important to let uh, everybody know that the duty of keeping our country safe is for everybody, not for agencies of government alone, but individuals mm -hmm. and government. Yeah. For us, on the side of government, we knew it's a duty we must do. Yes, um, what we witnessed yesterday was heavy than expected, but then we were also prepared. Mm -hmm. Like uh, some of your people said there, yes, all over Lagos there were falling trees, falling masks, uh, you know, and other infrastructures. But as soon as calls started coming in, we, we put all our men on the street. Mm -hmm. uh, the other agencies who should join us, mm -hmm. uh, Parks and Garden, they were out on the street cutting tree branches. Uh, Eco Disco, Ikeja Disco, they were notified, their men were also out. I don't want to say we were overwhelmed, but the fact remains mm -hmm. that, yes, shortage of staff and not having mm -hmm. enough right. dispatch centers also affected us. Because, mm -hmm. for instance, if anything happens in Igo, uh, Igo, uh, Badagri, for instance, yes. we will have to travel from Igodo to go there. That's the fact. That's the fact. Wow. Yes, we are creating mm -hmm. a new center in Badagri. But until that such center comes up, Oh, we so may I... not be able okay, to fantastic. get there in 10 minutes like so we promised other legal terms mm. around where our centers are located. Well, you can have in first stack. Okay, go yeah. ahead. So my question... So, 
It's important for us to know that, mm -hmm. yes, we must, first of all, have self-discipline. Mm -hmm. How do we dispose our waste? Mm -hmm. My men are in Shibolu now. That ordinarily should be what, you know, uh, Ministry of uh, Environment will do, mm -hmm. but they will tell you the budget is not released. Mm. But Shomolu local government, I must put it out, offered to fuel the excavator mm -hmm. that we are trying to use now to help clear their cadaver. Other areas they have called. But the challenge is that the world in Shomolu has been concretized on the edges. Mm. And it is easy for our excavator to start on the edges and begin to pull out those dirt and sand that is sealed, so to say, that has sealed up those cadavers and allow for free flow of water. Hmm. In other areas, excavator cannot work there except swamp boogie. And I don't have swamp boogie in my list of equipment. All right. So it becomes very difficult for me to assess those areas All and right. assist hmm. them. All right. But you see, some of these things are flash flooding. After hours of rainfall, some right. of these things ordinarily will go. But hmm. what is impeding that flow is just the is blocking of block drains. Yeah. Okay, drain. point again. Yes, my friend. Yeah. Okay, so apart from the f floods, and we know what, uh, and the drainage is over flooding, we understand that maybe waste that caused that. But the thing is, there were other things that we couldn't have, you know, prepared mm -hmm. for, like, or have control over, like the trees falling. Mm -hmm. I, I saw electrical poles on my way home that had broken in two and, you know, onto the road. So I'm wondering, what advice would you give Lagosians to, during this period, what do we need to look out for and maybe report before something like this happens, before the pole falls on, over your fence, before the tree falls onto your cars, you know, before it costs lives? What can we do before the rains come in? Well, for first of all, if you are inside your house when the rain is about to, stop, to fall, watch out very well. Mm. If it's going to be very heavy rainfall, it's better to stay indoor. Mm -hmm. One, a lot of water will have been on the street. You don't even know where potholes are. You don't know where gutters are. Those who are driving run the risk of running into potholes or gutters. And then some of them may be washed. It's important you stay indoor. Even if you are now indoor and waters are coming into your house, then you now know there's a challenge. The next thing is to find a safe place to stay. If you are driving on the road, visibility yesterday was near zero. Because I drove through the rain to some of the incident spots. Visibility was near zero. We advise in such states, park up the road, put on your hazard light, and stay. Mm, okay. And allow this thing to subside before you continue your journey. Okay. Again, right. your wipers at this point in time must work well. So. Your fog lights, your everything must work well. All right, because point. even if you pass, you must give an advance right. warning to oncoming vehicles so that they don't mm. run into you. Okay, all right, point. So yes. In the past, we used to have a sensitization, preparing people for the rain, mm. talking about how the rains would be. Did you not have any forecast on whether this season the rains will be heavy and what did the government do to sensitize people to prepare for the rain? And also maybe did they clear the drainages or, you know, um, talk to people to stop to clog the drainages with waste? Well, my sister, I will agree, probably it is not enough. But that we have not done anything, that's not true. Mm. We've tried to send out messages and all of that. Look at Latima World. We give information. Yesterday, I was consistently giving information to traffic radio. I was listening to it, and they were issuing statements. Don't go towards uh, Billings Way, in Mass and Poly, and all that. Another one at Ogudu. I was giving out this information to a lot of people. Yeah. In fact, it's important in Lagos when you are driving on the road, Listen to traffic radio. You mm -hmm. get very good information right. on that. That's an agency of government that can put it, uh, a call to, and they want me and respect my opinion. All right, okay. But the radio station, they may not take that. All right, go ahead, Sokwe. All right, sir. How is Lasema working with the minister, with those in charge of cleaning our environment? Because just before this rain, as at Monday morning, I was telling Nima about how dirty Lagos has been and how they've um, plastic bags filled with um, Trash. with, Trash. with plastics, you know, mm. were bagged on the road. So, and some of them were broken. You know, we move like what you want to do with Shemolu now. When you move and open up the drains and all of that, nobody is doing the next phase of moving it off the road. So when you have yesterday's kind of rainfall, everything you just cleared out of those drains yeah, goes back right in. And the rubbish that we had packed by the side of the road, take it back. So how is Lasema working? Because some of the things beyond the Loma to ensure that the trash picked up, I mean, the trash app that are cleared. bagged are cleared off immediately. Right. Well, I think that is sensible. And I also agree because 
In 2017, I was in Shomolu, this same place. Mm -hmm. I cleared all of that drainage up to Banjula, going towards Unilak, before mm -hmm. our excavator sank. And we had to stay for six months to bring it out, costing us so much money. If you pack that up to the uh, canal and drainage, mm -hmm. and you don't take them away, of course, they, they will be washed back. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. But one fact is clear. If, you, if I put a call to the Ministry of Environment, the next thing I will hear is, but you know now, there's no money. Mm. Budget is still there. And that's critical. Where would they, except for, you know, serious emergency interventions like this, mm. which I'm sure the government is on top. Because I was on call through, as yesterday, the government asking what's going on, mm. what have you done about here, and all of that. We just have to roll out everybody. Mm. Those who are even off were recalled to come out. Mm. Because it was almost a national emergency. Right. Yesterday, we had now, in our hands. Talking about... So for me, mm. we, will, we, will, we will get over these things. So right. it's a gradual process. Right. But for, for my agency, right. I will tell you that Yes, whenever we have opportunity to help people, we will do right. our best. Mr. Addison, I have to ask you something. I have to, I have to, because the only the problem that many people have in Lagos, especially, is that once anything happens, be it just a slight rain, traffic. there's traffic everywhere, it's jammed. Nothing moves anymore in Lagos. Yesterday was horrible. Ikorodu was blocked. Fairbairn Bridge, the our, expressway. Our, our, our people were held in it too. Yes, I, I think. know. So my question to you is, what can we do? And it might not be totally in your turf, but what can we do in partnership with other agencies, LASMA, the, the state government, to ensure some kind of a detour? When have these kinds of things happen, to ensure smooth flow of traffic? Because every, yes, everywhere yesterday was great, was totally locked down. Nobody could move. What I'm can we strong, do? I'm a strong viewer of your program, and I want to assure you, you are doing a wonderful job. Look, let's pro put pressure where pressure is. Mm. There must be an intelligence synergy. There must be stakeholders meeting mm -hmm. where everybody's role must be apportioned right. and people must be held responsible for their roles mm. it's painful when i had to do what i'm not supposed to do and i still get blamed mm. but you see as an agent of government yes, i won't shift blame mm. because mm. if i have an excavator and i'm not supposed to work for Ministry of environment mm. but i know i can do it that's why i'm in shomolu today mm. because that excavator is not even supposed to be for that that we're only managing palliative to help Mm. And it helped in 2017. We know it will help this year. There's a need for us to sit down together. Mm. And then we must also harness every opportunity, equipment or this. If you have this, if I have that, let's put them together for mm. public use. I Maybe think what we need was to buy fuel. Mm. Because I know some equipment are there with the Ministry of Work. They mm. could have worked. Yes, Maybe there's no money for fuel. The people who have the public works department to come. So Thank you very much, Mr. Adesina, for, for, for being on the show with us today. We really appreciate the work you've done. And we all, we, we definitely will continue to have this conversation and bring in other agencies that are required to ensure the safety of lives and property in Lagos. Thank you so Thank much. You much. Now, I'd like to take some calls also from our viewers because we'd like to share a few experiences on what happened yesterday. And if your area hasn't been touched or reached, please let us know so we can get Lasema or Last Park or Last Month to get to that area to help, um, to help you um, ease up the, the tension in that area. Talking about easing up, uh, I was very grateful. He mentioned um, the traffic station on radio. That really helped. 96.1. You, yes, you were able to tell where, you know, the detours you could take mm -hmm. and where trees had falling or, you know. So that is very good and we should keep putting that information and out that, and on Twitter But I agree, as well. they are building a station there so that mm -hmm. at least um, uh, rescue will be easier yeah, going forward very area. soon. Austino says that in Nigeria, we like to react rather than preventing. Before rainy season, risk assessment needs to be carried out. That's what all, respons all, all responsible should do so we don't find ourselves in the same situation next rainy season. So aside, aside the, the, for instance, when he talked about Badagri, I was like, if you have a, a center there, roads will still clog you. Mm. So the public works department has a duty to ensure that they maintain public properties, mm -hmm. roads, and all that, for the federal is FEMA. Mm -hmm. They should always, always be ameliorating the situation. Imagine that such, so, something happened, like what they had in front of the military barracks in Ojo at the time. It was just a ditch that, you know, the house, the foil that burnt down those cars. Mm. In, in rainy season, foil had gathered on top of the water, and fire happened when a car was trying to pass through. Preventive. It's preventive. Let's preventive. Preventive. take this it's last call, then we can move do on. Something. Morning, are you there? Thanks for calling. Hello, Ifaloa. Hello? I think I lost that call. Mm. Oh, okay, let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll have our guests take this couch. Stay with us, we'll be right back.
Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. We all know that most women have health issues ranging from fibroid to ovarian cyst and much more. On the show today, we have with us a journalist who lost his sister through a major female reproductive health issue. He's here today to share his story with us and how he started his NGO. Welcome with us, Mr. Ladi Taiwo. He is the initiator of the Abebe Reproductive Health Foundation um, yeah, that's what, that's what, <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. Thank so, you. So, um, how did this start? What happened to your sister? Let's start with that. Mm -hmm. And um, what um, happened that led to her death? Uh, well, my, my sister went in for a procedure, like you said, uh, in, uh, in, on, on uh, November 16. Uh, no, I think it was a week before, yeah. But she eventually died on the November 17th. I just got a call from my mom at about 5, uh, 5 a.m. About 5 a.m., so probably 6, 6 a.m. in Nigeria, and she was like, oh, I don't think something is right. So I don't know, I'm not feeling right. Something is wrong. Have you spoken to your sister? I said, I, asked, I called yesterday. She was still sleeping. I couldn't talk to her, but she's fine. Um, I was told everything is fine because she was, actually, she had the first procedure, uh, the first week if, if she went in. Apparently, the, the, the indication is that after the procedure, the woman must move her bowel or Mm. go to the toilet, mm. then that would, uh, it's an indication that everything it went well. Good. Yeah, right. but my sister didn't, didn't do that for a week. Wow. And she was done in Nigeria? Yes, in a supposed private hospital okay. in, in, in Ogba. So she, the following week, apparently the doctor realized something is wrong, mm. took her in again. Uh, when, time, you, yeah. when, you, when, when you saw this happen, did you feel it was something that could have been avoided? Something that was totally uh, beyond the control of the doctors? Mm. To be honest with you, I'm not here to criticize uh, professionals okay. or, or whatever it is, uh, because I, I understand they're doing a very difficult job, particularly when people are distressed right. and you are there be the only one they, they're looking up to. So right. I understand what they do. And, and like I said, I'm not here to knock them. So, but so let's go into your NGO and what it does. You, like you mentioned, women have a lot of, uh, a lot of reproductive, reproductive issues, issues. That, you know, that they deal with from amatomy to all the procedures that they have to do. Yeah. What exactly does your NGO provide? Is it the, the procedure to help or, the, or just diagnosing exactly. the, the condition? Okay, okay. basically we, we start with uh, reassessment because sometimes a lot of uh, diagnoses people get may not be exactly what they really are suffering from. Mm -hmm. My sister for a long time was treating fibroid and you know, she was worried, she was scared like every other young mother would like, oh, my children. She was scared of surgery, but she, the surgery became her undoing eventually. Mm. She put it off for a very long time. Apparently, when they realize it's the variance, is, the symptoms mm. are very close. Um, very close after this incident, I became, uh, I, I, I started reading up on this thing, and, and I, I, I wouldn't say I'm an authority, but I, I have a bro very broader knowledge of, of these things than I used to have before this incident. So she, 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 she thought, okay, if I just go do this thing and get, this, get rid of this and I'll be fine. But the, th the truth was that she, the, the doctor now told her the, the tumor, uh, the, the cyst was this becoming is... cancerous. Mm -hmm. And by all the literatures I've read, different researches I've gone through, none of these things is cancerous. They, all, they, 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 they specify that, that they are benign tumors, but they are not cancerous. Okay, okay because of time, we need to... So I, I'd like you to tell us exactly what the NGO will provide. So somebody okay. who, for example, has been diagnosed with, with, with fibroids, what would you provide for them? Okay, we start basically with a, a basic thing. We will reassess you okay. mm -hmm. so that we know what exactly sure. the problem is. Okay. So Sorry, this we, who are, the, are these professionals? Uh, okay, I've got, I've got two gynecologists on the team. Um, they are both Nigerians. One is based in Canada, the other one is based here in Lagos. He's going to be at the event on, on Wednesday. He's going to be the, 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 the resource person that would we'll educate, so educate women. Yeah, I have an event. We have an event tomorrow at uh, White House in Ikeja. So those two, when, they, when, you, when you fill out a form online, the, 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 the form gets to me. I forward it to the doctor. He makes arrangement for you. You go to him with whether you've had diagnosis or you are, you're thinking this is my symptoms. You go with everything you have, your paperwork, 
and medications, whatever medications you are on, you right. take it to him, he will reassess you. Let's okay. call it second opinion. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with I'm not saying yeah, course, the yeah, first yeah. doctor is yeah. stupid or right. is great, but yeah, you just need to be sure what right. we're dealing with right. before we go further. Mm -hmm. Then when the, when the result of the, of the test will obviously be shared with the patient, then I will come in. The, the doctor in Canada and the one, they're both Nigerians, would have a case meeting on what they found based on their discussion is what they would advise me to do, to, do to, to go ahead. If the procedure is absolutely necessary, then we will provide funding for that in a very hygienic, with doctors who know what they are doing. Not free? Just yet, you provide free. funding? Oh, yes. Okay. yes. So who are the people that you are targeting? Apart from their particular economic status yeah. or, you know, To be honest with you, it, it's, it's for women generally. And uh, I just want, I don't want anybody to find herself in my sister's shoes. My sister's issue wasn't a function of money. She raised the money. A friend told her, oh, I had mine done here. And she convinced the husband and they took, they, they took off. So it's not a function of money. There, is a, is a, there are things that, basic things that, mm. that, that wasn't done. Mm. Okay, so like, for you, the main push you want to achieve is the second, is that second yeah, opinion? Yeah, second opinion. Is let's know what we are dealing with. Yeah, yeah, let's exactly. know what. Don't scare people into go looking for money. Because mm. when she, the minute they told her her, two, uh, her sister is becoming cancerous, okay. she, was, she became somebody else. Right. Do you get what I'm saying? Oh, I'll leave my children. When you hear that big C, right. People, people conclude I'm gone, I'm dead. So right now, if somebody, number, number one, if you have, if you have, if you have been diagnosed with either ovariances, fibro, any yeah. issue, and the, come to that event tomorrow exactly. to get a second opinion. Then, or if you're feeling like you might have something, exactly. also come there to get your di first diagnosis. diagnosis mm -hmm. After yes. that, you can then decide, decide where are you, you want referring to them. We will now, wherever, but we, there, will, there will be, a, a close to a close in the sense that you would not you can't just say oh I'm going to this hospital right. because mm -hmm. we understand people might just come with mm -hmm. different excuses. Right. Mm -hmm. We have I've had we've had discussion with two, two private highbrow hospital in mm -hmm. Lagos. They've given me the average cost of the, the treatment. Oh, we just need you don't even have to see me. Our volunteers will just be there to hold your hand. Your family, your your husband, or whoever will go with you. Is this you discuss it with your family if you are if you are okay with it? Then we go ahead with it. I'm just going to So do they need to phone. register before coming tomorrow? No, no, you so don't have just to. Show up. Where just, they, just where go. Is at uh, White House um, hotels and conference center in uh, Tony Street, Ikeja, okay. at ten o'clock, okay. and that's where the event is taking place. Okay. Just people come, and we also have um, um, uh, blood pressure machines that give people check blood so people's blood pressure because all these things. It's, the, it's, just the, it's just the care around mm -hmm. my it's sister's treatment. Process. I'm not knocking the doctor. I'm not knocking. It's just the care around it because, Could have been better. yeah, from what mm -hmm. we find out, yeah, she was given over dose of anesthetic. Mm -hmm. That's what she. That's probably what what, what killed her. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm okay. saying? It's not like the guy is not doesn't know what he's doing or something. But okay, so this is yeah. such a, a major thing that you're doing. I mean, you've taken a, a situation that cause you pain and you're doing great for a lot That's of women yes. so thank you so much for doing that thank you but i'm wondering how are you funding this are you in partnership with hospitals with ah. doctors are they doing this helping you for free what are you, how are you going to partnership uh, we've discussed we've discussed the cost all i would just need is give them a call they tell me a date that we are available to have the, the procedure done after seeing the paperwork and i'll send them the phone Mm. That's so all. you're funding so you're the one funding the foundation for at the moment. As you yes, can. Okay. yes. Why are you open to partnership with people willing to? I feel a few, a few, a few companies are, are partnering with me, but it's not. Uh, they are not partnering with me for funds. Of course, if they bring money in, in future, mm. but at the moment, I just want to do this. It is what I feel like doing. Right. Right. It's not like in I've won a lottery or something. Mm. Don't get me right. wrong. I just feel. I need to right. help somebody right. who might be in that situation. My sister. We're really was. sorry about your pain. Yeah. It's obvious that this really hurts you and her yeah. family. And um, you. we only pray that God will continue to um, make her soul rest in peace and Thank give you. you the fortitude to bear this loss. Yeah. Thank you. And we celebrate what you're doing mm -hmm. and we encourage women out there. Thank you. If you have any reproductive issues, mm -hmm. you should go there tomorrow. At least you get a second opinion and then hopefully a proper referral. I might, have, exactly. have, might, might get a proper surgery. What time should cost? 10 o'clock. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 tomorrow. 10 tomorrow. Okay. White House. Let's go Thank on a you. break now. When we come back, if our guest doesn't show up, we'll talk about former Governor Arebe <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Stay tuned. 
Your View will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So we want to talk about uh, governor, former Governor Igor Chalabot to hold it. Now, recently, the world commemorated Hypertension Day. So on the show today, we have with us a metologist, Dr. George Bassi, to tell us more of the, of the causes and how we can avoid having hypertension. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Who is a metologist? Mm -hmm. uh, a metologist is um, the branch of uh, pathology that uh, we deal with blood and blood-related diseases, okay. essentially. Um, these include the leukemias, the sickle cells, you know, and other blood um, uh, bleeding disorders and the rest of it. Right. Mm. So, when you talk about blood, there are always issues of high blood pressure, anemia, high, high cholesterol in the blood. Now, let us start with hypertension because we said we, said we celebrated um, World Hypertension Day. Tell, tell us, remind us again, that what causes that high blood pressure, that causes the blood to have a lot of pressure in it that can actually lead to death? Yes, um, the vascular system actually has a particular pressure to which it, uh, which it maintains the blood flow mm -hmm. circulating around the body. So when this pressure uh, becomes too burdensome to the vessels, the, uh, that's what we call hypertension because the vessels are now, or, you know, uh, tensed, they are now mm -hmm. stretched, and um, it, it now leads to the various complications which I believe we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. So usually we hear about high blood pressure in maybe older people, but recently on the day that it was um, World Hypertension Day, there was an NGO doing something for children with hypertension. It was the first time ever, and I'm wondering because we hear a stress that causes hypertension. What stress? What causes hypertension in children? Yes, uh, hypertension. There's no age limit of mm. but hypertension, just like you've mentioned. Uh, pediatric cases too do come down with hypertension. Um, some would uh, most of most of the time they have other underlying conditions mm. like polycystic kidney. They have a renal uh, disease that produces them to hypertension. Although the um, genetic causes is not um, seen, uh, is not so common in the pediatric age, mm -hmm. as in the inheritance from both parents, till okay. probably they get up to the age of 18 mm -hmm. and above. But uh, there are some other underlying causes, especially uh, polystic uh, kidney, kidney disease that leads to pediatrics. Uh, so um, I, I know that we, we, we've had this discussion before, and you mentioned how most people that have kidney issues tend to have um, hypertension. hypertension also. Um, but the one that is common to us in Nigeria is cholesterol. That's the one we hear of, oh, you have high cholesterol, oh, you are going to have hypertension, oh, the cholesterol is going to layer the, the walls of your arteries, your heart is not able to pump. What is the link between cholesterol and hypertension and how can we reduce cholesterol to reduce hypertension? Yeah, it's um, lifestyle, lifestyle modification. Uh, find out that in, in our time compared to uh, uh, our forebears now we eat a lot of junks, um, a lot of uh, meals that are very high in um, cholesterol, very high in lipids. And these lipids get converted in the body to form uh, arachidonic acid and other substances that can infiltrate into the blood vessels, infiltrate into the kidney and you know, cause a lot of uh, havoc. Let me come to the issue of salt. Some people say if you have too much salt, because mm -hmm. I know somebody who exercises, he, yeah, the person eats well, but the issue is salt. And it's not so much salt the person eats, just that once you put some, some, some content or um, um, a little quantity of salt, it shows in his, um, in his high blood pressure. What's, that? What's the correlation? Yes, um, salt is a notable factor. Uh, it's part of uh, the dietary modification uh, that we advocate, uh, the WHO actually advocates uh, to take a minimum at least 1.5 grams of salt every day. Um, uh, the salt in, the, in this body tends to, it, it increases the water and fluid retention in the body. And this uh, 
culminate to increasing the uh, pressure in the vessels that we've uh, defined as hypertension uh, before. So reducing salt intake is a very key factor to... to, to back this. Yeah. So what, what, what's the link between hyper, uh, hypertension and diabetes? All of a sudden, okay, my mom had... Um, she's been hypertensive for a long time. She's been on the drugs and saying we have to maintain it. So recently, they do blood sugar. And this is someone who is averse to sugar at, of any intake in any way. And then they are treating her now recently for that as well. What's the link between both? Yeah, it's, 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 um, it's a two-way thing. Um, most of those with um, diabetes end up having uh, hypertension. Uh, that is what we call the metabolic uh, syndrome, comprises both hyperlipidemia, which is the lipid, uh, the diabetes, obesity, and uh, the other metabolic disease. So uh, 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 diabetes uh, uh, has a direct effect on the blood vessel and also causes uh, increase in uh, the uh, flow of blood through mm. the vessels. I was so wondering. wondering. One of the issues people have with this hypertension is the fact that they give you drugs for life. Mm. Mm. Is it possible you treat this issue of hyperpressure once and for all? Must you be having to use drugs for the rest of your life? Uh, uh, for now, uh, to the best of my knowledge, the best of my practice, uh, well, there's no uh, direct cure to hypertension. It can only be controlled. And they control both lifestyle and uh, medications. Okay, so um, I read somewhere, um, or I heard from someone that in Nigeria we have more men, less than 50, with hypertension, and that it changes over 50, you, you, might, you might have more women. Can you break down the factors that lead to us having more men suffering from hypertension when b less than 50, and what makes it change that we now have more women suffering from hypertension when they are over 50? Yes. Um uh, generally, hypertension seems to have a little predilection for men than women, and to worsen it, um, the intake of alcohol, tobacco smoking, is also higher among the men than the female folks. And these are also two key factors that contribute to uh, high blood pressure, directly and indirectly. And then for women, um, the, the postmenopausal uh, syndrome okay. that could um, aggravate uh, uh, hypertension. I, I know menopause comes um, after the age of 45. Mm -hmm. So most women above 45 with postmenopausal syndrome may also come down with uh, hypertension. Normally, when we treat hypertension, you know, we get drugs from the hospitals. But you know, there's something you mentioned, which for me is very key for everything, which is healthy lifestyle or a change in your lifestyle. And um, when we read recently, a lot of people are looking into different kinds of nutritional, right. you know, ways to handle to, um, problems like hypertension. Is there anything that we're learning that is very Nigerian, that is indigenous to Nigerians, that you can give to a fellow Ni average Nigerians on the before road, hypertension. you know, before you start getting drugs, that this and this is what you can do? Because sometimes, the reason I say this, you want to eat something, but it's something that they sell in America. Well, there are there indigenous foods, nutrition that we can get here? Yes, um, it, it depends on the, like, the, our potential is in, is in, there are different stages yes. and classes. Um, the, the, the optimal or um, normal, then there's the pre hypertensive stage, and then there's the stage one and stage two hypertension. Now, for those at, uh, within the pre hypertensive stage, depending on the other comorbidities that have been detected by the physician, you might decide to just. Like I had a patient that was just uh, stress-induced hypertension, wasn't having enough sleep, you know, so I just encouraged him to have enough sleep, uh, modify his diet, low-salt diet, uh, moderate exercise, at least 30 minutes work every morning. And he came back doing so, very well without help uh, me. having me. When a person is not overweight, very active, spends most of her life actively, Rest might be the problem, but then the person has now been advised to be on rest, and you still cannot recover your health ever again just because you know at some point you never 
rested properly. Is uh, it? Rest is important, Lima. No, <laughs> no, maybe yes, but you've you've changed that lifestyle. You now rest drops that overactive life. You've started resting, doing just normal walks, and yet you could can never recover your health fully. Okay, I'll I'll give you a, a scenario. I. I had a case of uh, a 46-year-old lady. Um, just like you said, she she was on almost four classes of antihypertensive drug. Mm. She had modified her lifestyle, low-salt diet, exercise, and she still the, she was still hypertensive. So when I reviewed her and uh, I had to do some extra tests, which uh, had not been done either to for her and. and I discovered she had a primary, what we call primary adosteronism. You know, we have an adrenal glands attached to the kidney. So there's, so, all the, there's a condition. Yeah, so there's, you know, that's why we talk about blood pressure. You need to be seen by a specialist, a physician that will do a proper evaluation. Right, yeah. Okay, so let's go on a quick break. Concept. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with our doctor. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Oh. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. So I have to ask you about the symptoms because we get a lot of doctors say, a lot of people say, ah, when I got to the doctor, the doctor said I was 200 or something over 100 or something and I, I was a walking dead. You know that I was very lucky to enter the hospital. So they come with all these testimonies. What? <laughs> And the Correct. symptoms, what exactly should you look out for mm -hmm. when you know that your PP is getting high and you need to go and get the drug? And what's the, the correct doctor? measurement of your PP? Okay. Um, in terms of symptoms, uh, most of the time, uh, hypertension is asymptomatic. Hmm. There's no identifiable symptom. Hmm. Uh, like, like I still saw uh, a senior police officer, an inspector, one of the inspectors, uh, in the police yesterday, and he just called me overnight that he, he was restless, he couldn't sleep very well, that he had been wanting to see me. And when I saw him yesterday, he checked his blood pressure, it was over 180, over 90. Mm -hmm. And he was doing, he drove down to my clinic, he had no, so apart from the- bad thing, 180 over 90? Yes, he's, 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 he's a range we call an hypertensive urgency. Mm -hmm. Urgency in the sense that there's no, um, visible end organ damage. End organs are the kidney, the heart, the brain, um, but there are some that will be at that range and there's progressive organ damage involving kidney, brain, the heart, and the rest. So uh, most of the time, the blood pressure would not even give you any symptom. But aside that, um, some people do have headaches, uh, blood vision, dizziness, uh, chest pain, mm. you know, and um, depending on other uh, underlying causes of it might uh, manifest. Doctor, go ahead, Nima. If you don't mind, <coughs> can you break down chest pain and all the, 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 the kind of headache? Because sometimes you say, when it's frontal, when it's back. And yeah, some people just have sudden head. pain in the chest and mm. think, or maybe while they're, while they're drinking, they have a chest pain mm. and think, what exa how like, exactly like, should like you said, want to Like I said, potentially it depends on the underlying cause. For instance, if the person, um, has a, a brain occupying lesion, a tumor in the brain. Mm. Mm. You know, the headache could be so severe, mm. okay. you know. But if there's no tumor and it's um, maybe it's having tendency to develop uh, a cardiovascular uh, right. insult, which we call stroke, you could begin to feel those um, awesome. uh, dull pain in the brain and then some weakness in yeah. any of the limbs. Let me take this call from leg. Barakat. He's been holding for a while. Barakat, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Morning. morning. Go ahead, please. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Please, uh, I want the man to address this issue for me. My late husband was somebody who looked very healthy. He never complained of any form of sickness. And on this fateful day, he woke up, took his bath as normal, and went back inside, inside his room. He received a call by 9.04. The person said he wants to come and collect something from him. So he collected, he, what the person was coming to collect from him, he kept it aside. And when the person came, the person met him dead. <laughs> Could this be an issue of hypertension? Because there was no complaint of any form of sickness. 
at all before that particular time. All right, thank you. Thank you, Baraka. We hear this kind of stories of somebody just mm -hmm. dropped dead. Mm -hmm. Not, and they are actually all before then healthy people. Mm -hmm. What could have happened? Yeah, uh, so many things could have happened. Uh, like one of the, um, the effects of um, hyperlipidemia or even excess um, tobacco and alcohol intake is what we call uh, atherosclerosis. And uh, th these are fat mobilized with other cells in the body, you know, um, tracking down, accumulating and tracking down major blood vessels in the body. Uh, and it could also involve the, the heart itself. Mm -hmm. And such uh, um, accumulation of fat could uh, Plug up the release, right. you know, it could be some droplet release, right. it could block the heart. It could be transmitted straight to the brain. Because of little time, let's just, yesterday we had a serious downpour and people lost cars, house, roofs off. There's cost. People are going through a lot. Between yesterday and today, they people are going worry. through immense stress mm. because of the damage that has been done, the cost that's going to be to them as a result of all the damage. As a doctor, you get a call from somebody mm. whose car has been smashed, the roof is off, the kids are stuck in the house. What would you advise the person so the BP doesn't go up? <laughs> well, uh, it's, it's, that's more like a psychological case. Okay. You know, I just say psychology is similar okay. to that. Okay. Uh, but uh, the, the person should just be calm, as, as calm as possible. It has happened, it has happened. Okay. There's nothing uh, you're going to do immediately to reverse it. But uh, advisedly, you should see a psychologist because there will be some mood changes that uh, um, need to be controlled. Okay, before we run off, I would like you to give us like top three or top five bad habits that you've observed in clients that you feel that like our audience should drop if they want to prevent the onset of hypertension or they want to reduce their blood pressure. Yes, um, before I mention them, I would also like to encourage um, us as Nigerians to take our health seriously, have regular checkups. At least, um, if you are confirmed that you have a normal blood pressure, I think you should see your physician at least twice a year mm. to just reconfirm that. And um, we, in terms of uh, lifestyle, uh, most of the times, the the causes of hypertension are primary. There's no underlying cause. Mm. But then alcohol intake, tobacco. And then um, among men, mm. then also that on, on the rise now is the use of oral contraceptive among women. Mm. That also has been uh, a notable important. cause of uh, hypertension. Started um, oral contraceptive, oh, the, mm -hmm. pills. the pills. pills. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Among, so um, those, these are. And salt. Yes, yeah, salt. Mm. Reduce your salt. Fortunately, that's round up. So mm. you advise women to do the tube stain? <laughs> <laughs> because we use pills now, you're saying that we are prone to repeat. The other ones are the other ones. Are no, they, they use it abusively, oh, especially okay. the younger ones, okay. you know. Oh, and, okay, so and those posts. Mm, yes, oh, okay. it's the, the, the long term take, effect. Yeah. Yeah. They have to run off. Thank mm. you very much, Dr. Mm. Mukamin. Hope you can mm. come back soon. Mm. All right. That's all we can take on today's show. We have a great day tomorrow. Tomorrow is our audience day, so please come early so you can get a seat. Have a fabulous day. See you then. Bye bye.